Welcome to our maths lesson and today I want us to look at the Cartesian plane. I want us to look at the Cartesian plane. It is not a new uh, topic to come across. We've once gone through this when we were looking at the in the previous uh, uh, years. Now First, let us understand that the Cartesian plane was uh, simply as a result of a discovery which actually was made by a mathematician. And most of the time, the one who invented this one is Rene Cartes. And Rene de Cartes, who discovered the Cartesian plane, was able to make it that we can simply have a representation of certain uh, positions on uh, what we call a plane. So when we talk about a Cartesian plane here, what are we trying to say? So a Cartesian plane has this shape. Now, when you look at this, going upwards or going further downwards, we call it the y-axis. Going far to the right or far to the left, is what you call the x-axis. Now the arrow simply shows that it is endless. They keep on moving further and further. This play axis, that is the y and the x-axis, are labeled. So you'll always find the point of intersection is the origin. And the origin has the coordinates of 0, 0. That's what the origin is. And then the Cartesian is normally numbered. We have from the origin towards the right of the Cartesian, of the x-axis, we have the, it is actually scaled. It has scales ranging from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. The same axis after the origin to the left, just like a number line, is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, and so on. Coming back to the origin, upwards is the positive labeling of, X, of Y axis, and so on. And from the origin down, it's the negative part of the y-axis. You see? This is what usually happens on a Cartesian plane. Now, just to remind ourselves, what is it exactly? that this plane is trying to tell us. When you talk about a Cartesian plane, it's simply that plane which allows us to locate a position or a point on a plane. We are able to locate a point. And for us to locate a point, then we usually look at the behavior of the x-axis, look at the behavior of the y-axis, and name what we call the coordinates. So when we look at the coordinates, as we shall be just saying it in a little in a few minutes to come, coordinates is simply a point on a plane. And this point on a plane is usually Named, uh, called a coordinate because of the following. It is, it is a point, like if I say this is a point, we look at its position along the x-axis and its position along the y-axis. And then the coordinate is labeled x, y. And in this case, where x stands for the value, its position of value are the, along the x and y is along the y like that. So for example, this case, we would say this is a 3, 3. 
The coordinate is 3, 3. So, these are called coordinates. Now, what should we know about this before we come to a real application of this uh, Cartesian plane? First, you need to know the following, that a Cartesian plane is also called a number plane. So we shall either call it a number plane or a Cartesian plane. Now, from what we have, from what we have, which is just a, sim a small sketch of what a Cartesian plane is, it has what we call quadrants, and a Cartesian plane is made up of four quadrants. These quadrants are labeled starting from the x-axis anti-clockwise. So, this part here is quadrant one. This one here is quadrant two. The next is what quadrant? Quadrant three. And finally, what we have is quadrant four. So, you can locate a point and tell what quadrant that particular point falls in. Because the, among the, all the points on a Cartesian plane will either fall, will, must fall within the four quadrants. Now, We have seen the origin, which is the point zero, zero. But then we have mentioned something called coordinate. Now, a coordinate is simply labeled as x, y, where you start with the value of x followed by the value of y. Now maybe to illustrate this, So we name it as coordinate, which represents x is for the horizontal units from the origin. How many units has the horizontal made from the origin? Take note that from here, this is the origin. So horizontal means we are either moving the number of units to the right or the number of units to the left. So that value you'll get where they're looking for. Is this so? If we were to pick a point, maybe somewhere here, I'll estimate. Then I'll look at it horizontal units from the origin. You see, from the origin, we are moving to the left because the point is in the second quadrant. So, one, two. 
which is negative 2. So horizontal unit from the origin of the x we are looking for is minus 2. And then we look for the second part, vertical unit from the origin. So here is the origin. Vertical unit is either you are moving downwards or you are moving upwards. But this point, because it's above, is in the second part, and which is above the origin, we count 1, 2, 3. So it's approximately 3. So I can have the origin, you know, this origin, as the coordinates of this point are simply 2, negative 2, 3. We usually start with the, with the x value of x, then followed by the value of y. So I want us to now start looking at the real Cartesian plane and then we shall now start looking at points and how to locate the position. So we are going to use a chart where necessary and when we are not able to, the little items that we need also we can also draw. Why we shall draw is because it is necessary for you to know how to draw your own Cartesian plane. Not just to keep a plane and have it there. You must know how to draw your own Cartesian plane. And I've said it must show the clear axis, two clear axes. That is the axis of x-axis and the one of y-axis. When you show those ones clearly, then you can easily go all in and label both the axes. When you finish labeling, you should be able to identify the quadrants. Now, don't write there first quadrant, second quadrant, and so on. But just know that that's the order. The first one, all coordinates are positive. We are very keen. We shall be seeing it very soon. The second one, the coordinates here for x is negative, but for y is positive. So we expect the coordinates here to be, here I have said both positive, that is x, y, for whichever position you pick. This part here is all are what? We have all are for x is negative x and y is positive. But in the third quadrant here, both of them are negative. The coordinates there are all negative. And the fourth quadrant here, they have x is positive, but y is negative. And you see that. So this is what we are going to maintain as we look at this, uh, this uh, particular topic as we actually uh, start identifying points and placing them on the Cartesian plane. So let us now look at the chart and we now start locating the points as required. Now, I want us to look at a Cartesian plane, a title or sometimes we call it uh, number Plan. Now, the first thing I've said is that when you look at this, I want to take it simple that this is my, our, our simple graph the paper. Or those who have a graph book, we shall use a graph book. Now, there is normally squared with small squares and big squares. Now, what I have drawn is just pick that part of the big squares where one square represents one unit. Now, on, for us to come up with a Cartesian, we need to draw our axis. We identify the axis. So we have identified the axis that this one is our x-axis. When you put the arrow, it means it's endless. It keeps on moving. So this is the x-axis. And when you move, you put this like that, it means the y-axis extends far. So this is the y-axis. Now, as we have seen, we have the point at which the, code, the axis intersect. It's called an origin. So our origin here, let me put a zero there. That's my origin. When you stretch to the left, it's negative. 
when you stretch to the right, it's negative. So you, you see that the behavior of just all these axes, with the, both the y and the x axis, is like a number line. So from the origin to the right, we give it positive numbers. But when you cross the origin or the and then come to the left, then it becomes negative. We start from negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Similarly, from the origin upwards, it is the y axis and its positive side. That is one. And then from the origin downwards, you give it a what? Negative of y values. So we have up to negative 7. Now, this is what we have. Then the question now that comes, are you able to identify the quadrants? As I said earlier on, if we point at a place where all the values of x and all the values of y are positive, then that is the first quadrant. That one will fall here. If you come across a coordinate with negative x-axis values and y is positive, then it falls in the second uh, quadrant. Now, in the third and fourth, can you discuss and tell me what would be the behavior of coordinates in the third quadrant and what would be the behavior of coordinates in the fourth quadrant? So, you must have discussed, and after your discussion, you have discovered the following. You've discovered that the first quadrant which falls here, the behavior of coordinates is that the values for x and values of y are all positive. So it carries the characteristic of coordinates x, y, where x and y are both positive. In the second quadrant, which is here, you see this part here, this second quadrant carries the characteristic of coordinates, value of x is negative but y remains positive. Now, when we move to the third quadrant, which is just here, then we find that in the third quadrant, the coordinates for both x and y are negative. You see? So already the moment someone points there, we already know the behavior. The fourth quadrant the coordinates will be for x will be positive but for y is minus y. So when you have been given points on a graph or what you call the number plane You'll just know the coordinates by seeing how it is going to behave. You cannot just point at a point and say, well, is it going to be positive or negative, and then you guess. On a Cartesian plane, the points are known. We don't know the values, but we know if they'll fall here, we shall say they are in the first quadrant, which is all positive. Second quadrant, where x is negative, but positive, but y is positive. Third quadrant, where both x and y are negative. And fourth quadrant, where x is positive and y is negative. So that is 
what we usually find when we work on this datation uh, plan. So, using the knowledge we have here, let's take a little example and do the following. So we want to draw a number plane for the following coordinates or points. We have to plot the point. The point, in our case, will be easier. We shall only be pointing and then we see what it means. So the first point we have, which is the point A, is coordinates to 3. The coordinates of B is 0, 4. The coordinates of C is negative 1 and 2.5. The coordinates of D is minus 3.5 and 0. The coordinates of E is minus 2 comma minus 2.5. The coordinates of F is 2 minus 4. Now, the question is asking us to draw the number plane or a Cartesian plane and then plot the following uh, points. We have drawn our Cartesian. We have this only, we have already, the axes as have been labeled. I have told you how to draw this. So we are not going to repeat. We have already drawn it. The next thing we need to look at is to plot or to draw the points. So now, this is a matter of just identifying the point. But before we look at it, I want us, we'll use the, I think we'll use a, we can use a different pen to show that where each point falls into. So in this case here, before we even move on the Cartesian, let us do it together and identify among the six points we have been given. How many points falls in the first quadrant? How many points eh, falls in the second quadrant? How many in the third and also the fourth? The way we've looked at this, it is going to guide us and even without the Cartesian plane, we can identify them from here. So when you look at this, the point A is 2, 3. Can you tell me if 2, 3 has got any positive integer among the coordinates? Definitely it's not. Then the second question we ask ourselves, from the behavior out, the properties of each quadr quadrant, which quadrant has the, its coordinate as both x and y positive? And definitely from here, it is the first quadrant. So let me assign, let me Q1 for Q quadrant 1. Let me call it Q1. So already this one, we know it is Q1. Right? For the second one, 0 and 4. Now, for this one, you'll find that it is going to fall again in the first quadrant. Why? Because we normally take it inclusive. And I'll illustrate this very interestingly. When we come to other topics ahead of us, we shall come to, real, to learn about the continuous line and the dotted line. When the line is continuous, it means it is inclusive. So we are saying this part, we can say, it is like we are saying that in the first quadrant, take note that the values of x, x is either greater than or equal to zero. Is it clear? 
so that if a point falls on this line, but yeah, we shall treat it as a point on the first quadrant because it is either zero or above zero. Okay, so this one here will be Q1. The third, we have negative 1, 2.5. Negative 1, 2.5. From the quadrants that we have, negative 1 is for x, 2.5 is for y. So x is negative, y is positive. X is negative, Y is positive, therefore this one is labeled Q2. The fourth, where we have negative 2, negative 3.5 and 0. Now, we started from here. So when we reach here, negative 3, this one negative 3, and this one is y is either equal to or greater than 0. In the, the behavior I'm saying here, in the third, this is in the uh, second quadrant. This one is happening in the first quadrant. It has a limit. So anything that will be below a 0 for y it will, we shall be looking at it from a different quadrant. But for this case, we, one side is already known. The x is negative, so we already know where it should go. But for this other y, because of it, that to be given a positive, they have only given us a 0. So we are saying, as long as it is either 0 or more, then this one we shall bring it to the second quadrant. Okay, we have another one here where everything is negative. Third quadrant, x negative, y negative. So this one is Q3. And the last one, 2 negative 3, 2 negative 3. That is x positive, y is negative. So we can give it this one as a Q4. Having said this, look at our Cartesian and we start assigning the values. The first point to be, pl to be plotted is the point 2, 3. Now, 2, 3, we say that 2 represents the Horizontal units, horizontal units from the origin. Definitely we are looking at horizontal units from the origin. It is 0, it is 1, it is 2, it is 3 and so on. What do we need here is 2. So we are looking at this point lying anywhere. From, it is uh, along here. You realize the value of x at this point is 2. At this point is 2. At this one, the line itself it is 2, and this point is 2. So that's why I'm saying that we are looking for horizontal units from the origin that makes up 2. So this is 0, 1, 2. So we already know the point should lie on this line. But the one to give us the correct location is now when we bring in the, the y. And the y we've been told is 3. 3, is it below or above 0? It's above 0. So we are going to move upwards. So 1, 2, 3. So 3 will fall anywhere along this line. Now, question comes. Where do the two lines meet? Where do they, do they intersect? So you pick, start coming from down with the coordinate 2, and then from also the other one from coordinate 3. So if I may point here, this is my 2, 2 is along here and 3 is along here. So you'll find this point will rest somewhere here. This is the point F. That point is A. We are still going to use the same Cartesian to do other work, so we only want to identify the point. So 
when you identify the point, so this point here is the point A. We looked at the number of units on the horizontal axis, we found it is positive of 2. A number of units on the Y, we found it is positive of 3. So 3 here, 2 here, where do they meet? You'll find that they meet at the point A. 2, 0, 4. 0, 4, we are going to the first quadrant and search for what? For a 0. The moment you identify where the 0 is, you look for value of 4 for that lies on the y uh, axis. Now, here we find that 0, the coordinate 0, 0 is the origin here, which means that we can have the value of x anywhere along y axis being 0. If I choose to pick a point like here, what is the value of x at this point where minus, where y is minus 7. And you learn that x here is 0, x here is 0, x there is 0. In other words, we can be free to say the following. We can be free to say that the y-axis can also be called uh, the point where uh, or they can also be called a line where x is equals to 0. It can be a line where x is equals to 0. Similarly, where the x-axis is the same as line is equals to y, y is equals to 0. Therefore, by being given 0, 4, we find that the other, as long as we get where the point for x, y will come, but 0 will lie along the y-axis. So what is going to determine the location is the value of y, which is 4. I define that 4 is here. So this point here is our B. Next is the point minus 1, positive 2.5. If we have the behavior of minus and positive, we have already seen it will fall in the second quadrant. So the advantage of knowing where the quadrant will be, forget about the other positions. It has already created you that this one should fall within a certain place. So we come and look at it. Minus 1, point, minus 1 comma 2.5. Minus 1 from the origin is going to the left of the y-axis. How many steps? One step for x. And how many steps for y? It is positive or negative here. Yeah. It is positive of 2.5. So we move. We are looking at negative 1 and 2.5. Negative 1 is here. 2.5 this is 1, 2, 3. So 2.5 is in between. So you will come and find that you have your plot point here. And this is the point C. Coordinate is minus 1 and 2.5. That is what they are asking us to do here. The next is the quadrant. We've assigned it the quadrant 2, and this is the quadrant which has minus 3.5 and then a 0. So, minus 3.5 is, is we are expecting it to fall anywhere here, so 3 is here. We have minus 3.5, so we are going to look at this point before we reach minus 4 point or something. So 3.5 comes first. But as we read 3.5, the value of y is 0. And I say, if you look at this here, if you look at this here, what I have here is telling us when the value of y is 0, then that value lies on the x-axis. So we are going to locate the point by looking at the behavior of y, but y should be the x-axis when y is 0. So we have been asked to just locate minus 3.5, 0. So minus 3.5 for x is along in between these two boxes, this the box here. 
So it will be along here. But what will determine is the zero factor. So we find that zero is along the x axis. So we shall come and identify the point 3.5. Well, because we know that x is zero. So this point we can call it D. It is in the, which quadrant is it? It is the second quadrant. Next is minus 2, minus 2.5. Minus and minus. From the guidelines here, minus and minus is the third quadrant. So I'm not going to look anywhere else, but I'm going to make sure that my plotting point lies in the third quadrant. You must make sure. It's not a request. That is what mathematicians do, giving facts. So it must fall here. So then we go ahead and look at minus 2.5 and minus, minus 2 and minus 2.5. That is x is 2, negative 2, and y is minus 2.5. You see there is a minus here for x, 1, 2. Minus here for y, so that is 1, 2, and then 3. We don't want to reach 3 because they are telling us minus 2.5. So we are going to look at minus 2, which is this one, and minus 2.5, which is here. When you follow this suit, you find that you reach a point here, and the point we are looking for, which we shall call E, is here. So you see we have plotted the point minus 2.5, minus 2 and 2, minus 2.5. The last point is 2 uh, negative. So we have 2 negative 4. This one, 2, negative 4, everything positive except for y. When you look at here, this is in the fourth quadrant. So just go and search for the values from the fourth quadrant. Minus, we have positive 2, minus 4. 2 is for y-axis, that is 1, 2, but the, the y is minus 4. If your y was to go upwards, it would be positive. So I move downwards, how many steps? 4 good steps. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I stopped there. And the other one was 1, 2. So when you follow this, you find it will stop here, and this is the point I'll call F. So this is a Cartesian plane. This point A, B, uh, we have A, B, C, D, E, and F have been plotted using the knowledge of a Cartesian plane, and you must locate the points correctly. So, I want us to identify a few things about this Cartesian plane before we look at further uh, questions on the same. By now, you should be able to locate. Now, we have only now seen that we can have coordinates. These were coordinates, or we call them points. There were various points. And we have been able to transfer these points to this particular uh, Cartesian. It should also happen that given the point this plotted on a Cartesian plane, you must be able to identify its what? Its coordinates. So let us look at one or two where we should be able to identify the coordinates. So we are going to look at oh, just a few points on our Cartesian and then I want you to tell me what is the coordinate of that particular point. So let us take a point, I am taking one in the third quadrant, let me locate this point, I call it P, then I take another point here. I call it Q. So we have two points. Then the question is, what are the coordinates of P and Q?
To locate the coordinates, we said it is written in the form the point P is given as x, y, where x and y are values. So for this case, the point P is what? What is the value of x at this point? You find it is minus 3, right there, minus 3. Put a comma. What is the value of y at this point? You find it is minus 1. Put minus 1. Close it. And you say, this is the point that was shown on the cartesian. You already have it. The upper side again, which is q, what are the coordinates of x or the value of x at q? When you follow it is what? Minus 3. Then, what are the coordinates of y at that similar same point? And you find that y here gives us a positive 6. Positive 6. So that is minus 3, 6. That's how we, so we should be able to, given the coordinates, we should be able to plot the Cartesian. Given the Cartesian, we should be able to name the points. Now, I want us to look at a question. We are not going to go into this, but now using your common knowledge to state whether the point lies in the first quadrant, second quadrant, and so on. So we are only to state and say first quadrant, second, third, and four without going to the Cartesian uh, plan. So, state the quadrant that the following points falls into, or in what quadrant do the following point lie? So we shall handle it one at a time, and we just write it up there: one negative three, one negative three, one negative three. We said that. We have the first quadrant, second, third, and fourth. In the first, everything is positive. In the second, it is minus x and then y. In the third, is, everything is negative. In the fourth, it is x is positive but y is negative. So that's what they want us to use. So quickly, let's look at it. 
One, one minus three fall is like the fourth quadrant here behavior, so this is Q4. Then this one, everything is positive, definitely that is which quadrant? First quadrant, very good. That's Q1. This one, X is minus two, Y is zero. Minus two, zero, so this one falls in the second quadrant because only X is negative. So this is second quadrant, Q2. This is positive 3, 0. Positive 3, 0. This will fall in the first quadrant. That's one. Q1. Minus 4, 4. Minus 4, 4. X is negative. The better is positive. You see, this one will fall in the second quadrant. Q2. Okay. 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1. 2 is what? Positive. And minus 1 is negative. This one will be there. Fourth quadrant here. Minus three six. This one will be minus three positive. Negative. This is second quadrant. So Q two. And finally we have three twelve. Everything is positive. So this is Q one. So you see, it is quicker. You can simply look at a point and you tell whether it's going to fall in the first quadrant or the second or the third or the fourth. Now, let us also complete the following questions as we understand Cartesian well. Just a review of a few things we've gone through. Complete these sentences. The coordinates of the origin are what? What do we call the coordinates of the origin? Yes? Yes, it is what? Zero, zero, and then you put the brackets. So this is the origin. Question two, the vertical axis is also called Y. What? The vertical axis is also called dash axis. When you look at this, vertical is up, down. Horizontal is left, right. So you realize that vertical axis is also called the y-axis. Which means the horizontal one is called what? x-axis. The quadrant that has both the x and y as positive coordinates is what? What quadrant is that? You'll agree with me, it is the first quadrant. It has both values for x and y as positive. The point 1 and negative 5 has the y coordinate as what? It has the y coordinate here as minus 5. That is the value of the y coordinate. Now, I want us to look at distances between points. And we shall consider several points here. Now, one thing about points that lie on a Cartesian. Now, if you were to do it locally, if we are using a graph book, we can do it locally and measure using a ruler. But let us look at two points, and then we see. Let me consider the point. When you say distances between points, we are looking at the point like this point A. I want us to pick another point, A and uh, the point P. Can you see where P is and where A is? Then when we talk about distances between points, we are referring to those points that have been joined. When you join two points, definitely you form a what? You form a line. So we are going to use a ruler to join the points and then we will measure and see. Are you able to get what, the, what we shall be getting when we come to distances between points now in a different way where we are? can also do it uh, on a graph. So this is the first. Plot any two points, join them, and then take your ruler and simply measure. Especially if you are using a graph book or a graph paper. Why? Because the graph paper has its unit uh, equivalent to one. Centimeter. One big box in a graph paper or a graph book is equivalent to one good 
uh, centimeter. So which means that if I join the point maybe from A to F, then I'll only count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? That is the measure, which by only measuring. So I want you to join a point here. Take A and F now that we know how to tell the coordinates. The coordinates of A is what? Is 2, 3. The coordinates of F is what? This is 2 and then this is minus 4. So if you join this, what is the distance between A and F? So work out that and then you see what you get. So you should have been able to get this. So if you join it, A to F, and then you do the measuring. Mine is not according to scale, so we are not going to uh, measure, but instead I'll count the number of boxes. So that is what I have. A, F, A, F. When you join A, F, so when you join A, F, to find the distance between these two points, I'll start from A and count to F. But you as have allowed you to do what? To take your ruler and measure in centimeters from A to F. Your graph will agree that the number of units is equivalent to the centimeters by that. So for my case, I'll count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'll say that the measurement that I have, that the distance between A and F is, the change that we have is 7 units. Why am I getting 7? Was there any change in uh, x? No. It, x here was 2, x here was 2. But y was 3 here and y was minus 4 here. So total units here, if you want to get, is very simple. And is the uh, magnitude we are getting. So you just take the last point that we have, which is what? Which is uh, minus 4. And this one is a. So if you can find the the situation you want to find A, the coordinates of A would have been 3, that is a 2, 3, we have it here, and the other one is 2 minus 4. Now I'm saying the change in X is 0, because it's 0 minus 0, but change in Y is 3 minus minus 4, which is equals to 3 plus 4, which is equals to 7 units. Is it clear? So we can get seven units just like that. However, we have a situation when now we don't have it this way, but instead the points are going across. Let us consider here the line, the point, the following points A, P. Or A, Q. Let us start with any. A, Q. A, P. How do we get the measurement? So I join A to Q. If I'm to join A to Q, this is what I'll have.
the coordinates of A is 2, 3. The coordinates of Q is minus 3. And what? Minus 3, uh, 6. So I'll put that one down. Now, how do we get the distances? We say this. There is what we call Pythagoras theorem. Now, Pythagoras theorem can be used to find the distances between points. Especially if your line when you join, it is across, it is not horizontal, it is not directly vertical, it is something like that. Then we can apply the Pythagoras theorem. And as you all know, Pythagoras theorem simply looks at right angled triangle, whereby if we want to get the hypotenuse, we simply look at the number of units for the opposite and the number of units of the adjacent. For example, if this is 3 and this one is 4, to get h, we know using Pythagoras theorem, we say h squared is equal to 3 squared plus uh, 4 squared, which is equal to 9 plus 16, which is equal to 25. Therefore, h squared is equal to 25. We take square root of both sides by, by the square root of h squared is h and square root of 25 is what is a perfect square is 5. So we can say that h is equal to 5 using Pythagoras theorem. That is what it states here. Now I want you to look at this, the line that we have joined and see are we able to identify the, the right angled triangle? If we are able to identify it, then we draw it. So if you look at it very keenly, you will identify the following situation. Now, here we are. We had only two points, A and Q, and we've been asked to find the distances between the two. Now, I've said we have to apply Pythagoras theorem to get the distances here. If you, alternatively, if it's to scale, you only measure. But this is mathematics. We should also improvise a way. Now, A to Q is a distance that if you look at it very closely, it you can sketch and have a right angle triangle like this. Now, where the hypotenuse is the distance we are looking for. That is, if I may put it like, this is the A, this one is the Q. Let me call this point just N. So we are looking for the distance A, Q. But what is a n? If I call this point n, now you now this one you count the units. Well, how many units are there from a to n? This is one, two, three, four, five boxes. So I'll put here five units. And then for the vertical distance is from here to here, which is one, two, three. This one is giving us three units. So this is like a right angle triangle measuring 5 by 3. Are you able to find the distance AQ? Using Pythagoras theorem, using Pythagoras theorem, we say that AQ squared is equals to 5 squared plus 3 squared. Which means that AQ alone 
will be the square root of everything there, which is 5 squared plus 3 squared. So what is the value of AQ? AQ is equal to the square root of 5 squared is 25 plus 3 squared, which is 9. This one gives us the square root of 34. So therefore, A, Q, you take your calculator and use it, it's simple, to get the square root of, get the square root of 34, and you'll find that it is 583 Now, it is always good to round off your answer and let us round off to two decimal places. Where now this is the critical digit and this one is the round, uh, uh, rounding of uh, the rounding digit. So because the critical digit is less than 5, so we can agree and say AQ is equal to 5.83 units. So, any time you have the lines like that, simply sketch and identify what type of right angle it will form. Identify the base by counting the number of boxes. Identify the height by counting the number of boxes. Those boxes we've counted will form our base and our height. Then the, what we are looking for is our hypotenuse, which is found using the Pythagoras theorem, which states that h squared is equal to base squared uh, plus height uh, squared. So having said this and on this diagram, you should be able to find the distance between points, whether they are on a vertical, uh, vertical line or a vertical line or a horizontal line, or if they are across. And if they are across, then you bring in the idea of Pythagoras theorem by identifying how many units forms there base and how many forms the height. So that is it for now. When we come back still on the Cartesian, we shall now be looking at the uh, Cartesian, but this time using the tables to draw Cartesian. Thank you.